Good morning everyone! This morning we'll be talking about the liver. What a tasty meat! Some of you might say, uh, uh, to those people I usually say, if the liver was as toxified, toxicated as you think, do you think you would be alive? The fact that it's a filtering system uh, doesn't mean that it's toxicated and doesn't mean that it's dangerous for you to eat it. On the contrary, uh, the liver is a very, very beneficial for your health. And the more raw you eat it, the better it is. So where is the liver situated? The liver is situated on the right side of the body, a little bit below the ribs, and you can feel it through palpitation, especially, unfortunately, if it's swollen. And the pain that radiates due to liver problems comes all the way to the shoulder. Uh, very often in the right shoulder, uh, you can have pain. It's uh, overall pain. It's not like a joint pain. It's a dull pain. And um, it usually comes from some organs around the body, uh, in the body around this area, which are attached to the ribs and muscles that lead to dysfunction of this shoulder. So this is something to explore. Um, also, pain can come from um, pain. Pain in the ribs can come from the liver as well, because every organ, every tissue, when they swell, what happens is they pull on different muscles, and uh, then the muscles cannot function properly, and we feel pain. Just for the record, um, our organs do not have pain receptors, so the pain travels. Um, through the muscles and the muscles are showing that in this area of the body we have pain. You can, cannot feel pain in your kidney or pain in your liver or even in the heart. It's the muscle that contracts and shows, um, makes us feel pain through the receptors. So, what does the liver do? The liver is filtering. It's filtering um, nutrients from the digestive tract, or from the pancreas, and uh, also from the spleen. That's why liver is extremely important organ. And this is the only organ that they say that it can recover 100% even if it's taken out up to 90%. This is amazing. I, in different literature, they have different numbers, but this is the last thing I've read. And um, I believe them because these are researchers that uh, state so. So um, another thing that can reflect on the health of the liver is also the posture. Yes, when the posture, the body very often twists and uh, then it has, uh, cre it creates tension over different organs. And because the liver is a very big organ, it can easily create tension on the right side of the back of your body. So also, uh, sometimes uh, a part of the twisting, the body can lean to one side. Usually the body leans away from pain and uh, if there is a pain in the liver, it leans to the right or some problem of, uh, with the liver, it leans to the right. Um, I will talk about um, herbs that we can use uh, when to support the liver. I don't want to use the word treat. Uh, it is, yes, possible. We can do a lot to treat the liver, but I just want to keep a low profile and just go with support. Um, and some herbs that can intoxify liver. And I think this will be um, interesting uh, for you um, because um, herbs are nutrients which can very easily tone and help the body to recover, rejuve uh, rejuvenate, and etc. So um, another thing about the liver I would like to say that um, liver, according to the Chinese medicine, collects anger, resentment, 
and very often I see in the client um, connection relationship between their emotions and the state of the liver usually when we go through the blood panel or uh, when we evaluate the body um, the musculature the posture we can um, we can see that relationship between emotions and uh, physical body as you know the organs have um, neural uh, peptides which are receptors for emotions emotions are very quickly changing the body through their hormonal uh, through hormonal changes um, and this way uh, the body shows physically how we feel mentally uh, yesterday i was watching a testimonial of on one of my colleagues website that girl healed the prolapse for five weeks just working on her soul just uh, exploring her emotions, analyzing them and etc. So if you uh, struggle with anger or resentment, this is the time to work on your liver. And through um, nutritional support, through exercises, respiratory techniques and emotional work and spiritual work, you can achieve a lot for the health of your liver. I would like to start with something which is very uh, famous and this is the milk thistle. Uh, usually that herb is given uh, when people have trouble with the liver. Yes, it has enormous properties, many, many of them. I will just mention two which are very important. So it increases the bioflow. Uh, why this is important? It's important for your digestion. It is important for your assimilation and distribution of the food. Of course, it's not as simple as I said it. Um, there are myriad of processes going on uh, with this increased bioflow, but um, that's what is easy to understand. That's why I'm saying it this way. Also, it conserves um, it helps the liver to conserve glutathione. Glutathione is a very powerful antioxidant. They sell it, but I want to tell you that the body produces it. And I have lectures below about that. You need to find the precursors that will help you to produce glutathione. But uh, taking uh, ready-made glutathione, artificial, is just it's not going to um, work. Uh, the standard doses uh, raise liver glutathione about 35%, which is very, very uh, important because also the glutathione keeps us young. And I tell you, uh, once I work with a surgeon on a cancer case and I've noticed that his hands are trembling and he said that he doesn't do surgery anymore. And um, I asked him straight, I said, um, are you drinking? Why are your hands up? He said, no, I'm not drinking, but I think I took too much glutathione. <laughs> so he overexcited the body. That was his thinking. I'm not, we're not sure if that's true, but it's a possibility. Um, also, glutathione, um, the milk thistle slows the prostate, colorectal, liver and skin cancer growth. What it does is it coats the body, uh, the liver, and it protects it. Even when people go through chemotherapy that targets the liver, um, it does not interfere with the chemotherapy. It protects the liver and it does not blunt the reaction of the chemotherapy over the liver. That's why many people prefer it and uh, really uh, like uh, the, to use the uh, milk thistle. Another thing is uh, a lot of people are doing coffee, um, doing coffee enema. Coffee enema is very good because also stimulates uh, liver, gallbladder, and etc. Um, if you are going this down this way, I 
suggest you to buy the Gerson Therapy coffee, which is a, a very light roasted coffee. And uh, this is the best coffee um, you use for enema. It's like beige. I just want to tell you that the enema, uh, yes, it stimulates the body, um, the digestive organ to work and um, to work harder. We use it a lot in cancer cases in uh, Gerson therapy, uh, but also it can overstimulate the body and also it can, you can get some nervousness from it, especially if you're not a coffee drinker. Um, the, the light roasted is very high in caffeine um, and um, the animals are going just in the beginning of the colon. If you would like to do a colon irrigation, then you have to go to a specialist and that really helps and stimulates the liver because it cleans, uh, cleans a lot of debris from the colon and that rejuvenates the work of the liver. Another herb um, I would like to mention is the balmany. The balmany um, is a very, very interesting herb. The used parts of this herb are leaves and uh, dried aerial parts. So um, the balmany is very important for removing of torpidity of the liver and for the cleansing um, of the whole system from morbid matter, morbid bile and tissue secretions. So another uh, thing I would like to mention as the balmany is used in diseases like dyspepsia, debility and uh, jaundice and uh, it has very very good research and very good properties for those conditions. I'm mentioning those because they are related one way or another to the liver. Any problem in the digestive tract relates to the liver, <laughs> to the gallbladder, to the intestines, because this is your where your immunity is. This is where the body meets the outside world. And if this system does not uh, function properly, then we have a problem and a big one. So uh, this balmany also is used uh, is used as anti-bilious, um, anti when you're nauseous or vomiting, and um, it's used to eliminate a biliary or jaundice condition in the body, and also in stomach worms for children. Yeah, balmany is a very very good. Um, herb. Um, they also call it Chilone glabra and they also call it bitter herb or snake head. I know it as balmany. And uh, I would like to hear to give you a little tonic uh, for over secretion of bile. And uh, this is tonic made from century. Uh, century also is called feverfew. Uh, fever word, sorry, fever word. Uh, in severe cases like jaundice, it can be combined with barberry bark and dandelion uh, or dandelion root in case of um, jaundice, as I said. Um, when you use it alone, sometimes a little senna can be added to it um, so to soften the bowels uh, because it works for over secretion of the bile. It tries to regulate this and it's important um, the bowels to be eliminated properly, not to push and cause uh, hemorrhoids. So when you do tonics, you just take the herb, uh, pour, make an infusion, pour um, hot water and um, you can drink it throughout the day. I drink my tonics warm, I drink them cold as well. It doesn't really change uh, the properties a lot. Another thing I would like to mention is the barberry, which is uh, European barberry or common barberry. I uh, personally love this herb and I use it a lot with clients, everybody who has a gallstones 
or who has um, any problem with the liver. Uh, the barberry has a lot of properties like laxative, antiseptic, it is also uh, diuretic, um, it uh, stimulates of the contraction of the gallbladder, so, um, so it can expel uh, the stones. Uh, this has to be combined with something which uh, should be able to break down the stones, like chanka piedra. It makes them to little sands and um, then you can use the, this herb to be able to expel the, the barberry herb. Uh, many stores sell it as Cascara Sagrada, um, but this is not the same herb. I just want to warn you. And I would like to give you, um, I wrote down here, a tincture. This is from the recipe of Dr. Samuel Thompson. And uh, this comes um, from New England. So the tincture uh, was uh, very frequently made by macerating the bark in hard uh, cider. And uh, it was used for bad digestion, for constipation, uh, also for stomach pain, as well as if people have excessive flatulence. And it goes like that. There are three herbs. Uh, each of them you need 112 grams, or these are four ounces. And one of them is, of course, barberry, dry herbs. Uh, you need uh, white poplar bark and wild, uh, wild cherry bark. You take all those herbs, 112 grams each, and you crush them and uh, macerate them, soften, soak, um, one week in a gallon of apple cider vinegar. Then you strain them and you take 15 milliliters or more three times a day. So um, this is very, very helpful. It's a helps all the hepatic organs like the gallbladder and the liver um, and also another very easy thing you can do is getting some lemon squeezing it in the morning put a little bit of cayenne pepper if it's flakes more if it's powder and especially if it's very very spicy uh, you put very little on the tip of your um, teaspoon and then boil uh, the um, peels from the lemon and add, only for two minutes and add this water to your uh, lemon squeeze fresh squeezed lemon and drink it the best would be on an empty stomach in the morning um, they say that not only stimulates the liver but it also cleanses the liver so but <laughs> some people with problems of um, their liver or gallbladder with severe um, burping or belching um, or a flux at all cannot tolerate the fresh lemon. I suggest to them to do only the boiled peels. So be mindful, be careful when you take those things. We don't want to irritate the body. We want to help the body. Um, Another thing, what I would like to say about the liver, the liver, when you consume it, it should be as raw as possible. Then you get preserved the best nutrients. It has a lot of stem cells and uh, uh, vitamins, uh, minerals. It's very, very nutrient dense food. What I do, because I can't somehow eat it very soft, very raw, I, um, I freeze it. Uh, I buy liver only from a butcher, not commercial liver. I freeze it and I cut a little bit, just on the tip of your finger, like a one nail, and I put it in a juice uh, from frozen uh, berries and other stuff if I want to put there. And that's the way I blend it and that's the way I consume it. We usually do once in a while, one month um, juicing instead of salads in the morning. Uh, yes, I'm very, um, <laughs> very strict for our morning salads because uh, 
you need fibers to start the day and you need proper elimination. So sometimes um, we're fed up with these salads. So we we'll say, okay, let's do a juice. Uh, we'll have berry juice and uh, not juice, I blend it. I, I keep the fibers and uh, I add a little bit of raw liver. So this is the way I consume liver and of course cooked liver I try to do at least once a week, a little bit, not too much. Um, it depends on the person, like I'm a protein type, I really like fatty meats and uh, I can consume more of the liver. People who are on the, on the other side, the carbotypes, they don't like it that much and they can't consume big amounts. So, small amounts, I have once in two weeks, if they count once a week, but yeah. So, um, and another interesting thing about the liver is parsley. Uh, I didn't know this until I studied herbalism, that parsley uh, is actually a very powerful herb, so powerful that if it's overdone, can cause fatty liver. Isn't that amazing? Yes, some herbs uh, can intoxify the body and cause problems if they're taken in excess amounts. However, that information we have from research and very often in the research it says it might because one dog died, one cow died, uh, it might cause this in humans. But I prefer always to be on the safe side. And when I give parsley juice to people, I'm always very, very careful. Because for instance, uh, the overconsumption of parsley in pregnant women can be a problem because uh, it promotes contraction um, of the reproductive system and it could be a problem uh, with inflammatory diseases of the kidney because of the filtering process the kidney cannot really deal with um, what is from the parsley in the uh, blood and urine so um, there aren't allergic reactions uh, of the parsley um, many there aren't many allergic uh, reactions but there could be allergic reaction of the skin, um, the mucous membrane as well, allergic reaction can occur. Uh, mucosal bleeding can occur um, and other inflammatory processes. So this is some interesting fact to know. But of course, we're talking about the amounts when you take a bunch of parsley and juice it every day for many, many days. Um, I usually, uh, herbs I'm scared of and I feel uneasy with, I give them up to four weeks to clients. Um, then we're for sure, we're not gonna get any problems with them. So, uh, what else? Uh, when it comes to exercise, the liver responds very well on twisting the body. It gives it quite a lot of space and stretches of the intercostal muscles of the ribs. Uh, I do this with the clients even just for prevention because it's a big organ and it needs uh, to have proper space and it needs to the organs around it, the muscles around it to function properly in order for this organ to do the job. I have noticed on myself that if I sit a lot, long times in front of the computer, I can get, I can lean to the right and get a pain around the liver area. So this is something to consider. Um, I told you about the pain in the right shoulder and um, yeah, there are specific stretches and respiratory techniques for the liver. Amazing organ. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can ask or uh, just write in the comments below. I will work on this post. I will put a little bit of text and the recipe I told you. And uh, I will see you next week. 
thank you very much for watching uh, I, he I see here Maggie Maggie Campbell thank you very much for watching the entire life have yourself a lovely day and uh, you see what I'm going to be doing I will be shoveling and staying outside uh, I'm very happy that we have snow so I hope you enjoy your day as well thank you join our healthy and community Facebook group if you have any questions please free to comment below don't forget to follow and subscribe for more